Metacognition is a vast field of investigation, partly because metacognition is an objectively identifiable form of cognitive activity. You don't have to take my word for it that I'm metacognitive. There are actually tests that you can give me up to and including neuro neurological testing, psychological, behavioral measures. These measures can let you have a fairly accurate assessment of my ability to think metacognitively and my level of competency at specific metacognitive tasks. This is why I can say confidently that metacognition is a cognitive skill rarely demonstrated strongly outside of humans. However, rudimentary examples of metacognition have been seen in rats, dolphins, chimpanzees, and other primates, but not all. For example, the Capachan monkey did not display very much metacognitive aptitude despite the ability to engage in some pretty smart behaviors, just not specifically metacognitive behaviors. The same is true for the pigeon, which, again, if you know anything about Skinner's box experiments, well, pigeons are pretty smart and trainable. Plus, species may demonstrate really narrow metacognitive competencies that are missed because we lack a framework for the kind of thinking that is done by that species. So while there is little evidence for the metacognitive abilities seen in humans and other species, its evolution is beginning to be uncovered because we are getting better at looking for evidence of thoughts about thoughts and being less species-centric in our thinking. And then there are, and will continue to be, new technologies that will continue to push our understanding for example, a procedure called NeuroPixel right now can record the whole brain activity of small genetically engineered animals like fish and mice. It's just kind of mind bending when you think about what we're able to do here. See, they, they breed these fish and mice to express a molecule that fluoresces or glows when the neurons fire. So as the animal thinks, the researchers are literally just able to watch thousands of neurons flashing and interacting with each other in real time. What can you learn from a study like this? Well, one study of zebrafish larvae found three distinct neuron groups, one that remained active during hunting, one that remained active during exploration, and a third that activated as the fish switched states. Interestingly, the changes in activation triggered by the third state were not always related to hunger and may be evidence that even in an early evolutionary stage of development, there are neuronal systems engaged in mediating choice making. So when scientists use this neuropixel technique to watch these cells interacting, they may possibly be watching the forerunners of the neurological activity that produces the metacognitive capacities seen in more complex organisms.